Desperation can cause you to make bad decisions. So what she did was she had her boyfriend cut her hand off. I can feel it in the air. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a good day. I'm starting to really believe that. Communication is the key. I think communication is the key. We need to start communicating. Let's just start communicating more. Let's have more. What's up, Team Jackson? It's your girl, Shara. I'm here alone this time, you guys, because I am doing a mukbang, and I have what you call a salmon pinwheel. It has salmon, and it also has um, crab cakes in it with some broccoli, some corn, rice. And these are scallop, um, what you call it? Like, not crab cakes, but they're like scallop cakes. You know, they're cakes, but they have like the scallops in it. Pretty much, no, stuffed scallops, that's what they're called. And that is it. So before we begin, um, make sure you subscribe. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, like, share, and comment, and click on that post notification bell so you'll be notified every single time we post a new video. So before we start, let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for your grace, your mercy, and the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Okay, you guys, so um, let's begin eating. I've never tried the salmon pinwheel before or the scallops before, but let's, let's see. See how that goes. Pretty good. This is good too, y'all. See. Mm -hmm. It's good trying to get through it y'all because I'm trying to cut it open but I know you guys can probably hear there's some mowing going on in the background so, <laughs> so if you hear a little motor that's what that is so how y'all been doing I hope all is well with y'all. I'm trying to think about, you know, you know, when we do these videos sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I try to think of a topic, you know, to talk about and stuff. And um, I just think that, you know, I'm probably just going to talk about God, you know. Especially during these times where people are going through, you know, a big life shift for a lot of people and trying to handle it and how to deal with it and those different things. So, you know, I was going to talk about God for a second. Hmm. I just want to encourage everybody just pretty much that even though that we're going through this whole ordeal, the pandemic and those different things that, you know, he's still present in it all, um, that we can still lean and depend on him and uh, he'll be there. Well, what, they got a rope in here? Yeah, I guess well, I was trying to figure out how they made that pinwheel. There's like a little string in it. Yep. Yeah. I'm telling y'all that um, sometimes I know for me, it's like you can like this lonely place. Excuse me, y'all. This is the phone. My phone going off over here. But you get like in a lonely place. And sometimes you feel like, you know, you don't have anybody by your side from time to time. And while you think that way, it's not really true. Because, you know, God's sitting over there. He's like, wait a minute. I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and he hasn't. 
But, you know, sometimes we get into that frame of doubt when it comes to um, feeling alone from time to time. So, I'm telling y'all, he is, he is ever-present. Even now. When you think about it, we have a little more time. I don't have to say that for everybody because some people's lives didn't really change much when it comes to it because some organizations just kind of kept going. Um, but but I know for, for me, especially when it first broke out, I had a lot more time on my hands, you know. And I, I can't, I've got to be honest, I really didn't use that time the way that I really should have. But, you know, lesson learned because I'm telling you, this is um, a very trying time. And I'm beyond it. I am so tired of this pandemic. I'm over it. I wanted to be gone. You know, I want to go back to like a normal type of life, not having to worry about every single thing. Now, some things is not going to change. Like, I'm still going to wear my mask. I'm still going to wear, um, you know, have my sanitizer everywhere I go. I'm still, there's certain things I'm going to do. Even when the pandemic um, settles, when our immune system gets better and all that other stuff, I'm still going to do those things, you know. But uh, but I'm just ready for that freedom of life, you know, that I'm, I'm just tired of dealing with that overwhelming fear. You know, every time you go somewhere, oh, my gosh, you know, ooh, let me stay six feet away because I don't know what they have. Because, you know, some people have the mask on and some people don't. Which I don't understand. And, and some people's reasoning for that is because they feel like, you know, I'm tired of living in this bondage. So I'm just not going to wear my mask anymore. So they'll just take theirs off or whatever. But I'm just, I mean, it's just, it's just time out for that. But now I'm just trying to tell you guys that, look, I don't care how bad it seems. I don't care if you feel people turn their backs on you and let you down. God hasn't changed one bit at all. And it's just a matter of whether or not we are accepting to receive him and to have that communication with him and stuff. God, I tell you what, I was thinking about something earlier today. I was thinking, I said, you know what? Sometimes in your dealings with people, you know, you want to be right but I don't even care about that when I thought about it I said you know what I just want to be right with God at the end of the day you know so it, people can be people but the most important thing is to be right with him in everything that you do because even if it's um on the job or something like that people are going to have their opinion as far as what they feel you need to do but at the end of the day it's like are you pleasing God family friends excuse me anything it should that should be your centralized focus because of the consistency that he has. I'm be honest, y'all. People, we as people, we're not consistent. We're not at all. We can't even hardly please ourselves because at the <laughs> one day we want a certain thing for our life, and the next day we decide, look, I don't want this for my life anymore. We're just inconsistent people. Um, that one cons part of cons that constant in our life is him. That's the constant. So, if you think about it, is it easier to, what you call it, like hang on to something or flow with something inconsistent? Or is it easier to flow with something that's consistent? Or, in, the, or for, or in other words, is it easier to be influenced or obey a consistent person or someone that's inconsistent? So, why not obey him, you know? Why not do that? Because even in our own ways, we're inconsistent. So, you know, I just, I just think that that is a good, good thing to have that consistency because that's where that stability goes in your life. Because people will tell you all types of stuff. I mean, they'll tell you that they believe God is telling you this, telling you that. But if you know in your heart what God has spoken to you, 
I'm, I'm telling you, that's a, such an unmovable thing. Very unmovable. They can say anything they want to. There's like this um, contentment and satisfaction in it because you understand where you're going and you understand what God is telling you to do. So if somebody else is um, trying to tell you something else, you can kind of let it roll off, you know, roll off your shoulders a little bit. But I'm just saying that he is an amazing, 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 amazing God. He is. And this is, I'm telling you, and I understand it's hard because, you know, we're dealing with a lot of changes. Like, if you look at your life, this is probably the time of, the, uh, of your life that you probably have experienced the most changes you've ever experienced in your entire life. Because there's been so many different components, in, internal and external, from so many different aspects, you know, from different people, from different families, in your family, out your family. A lot of changes. You know, we've lost some people throughout all this. We've had some um, losses as far as relationship-wise throughout all this, financial. You know, so many different things. The, the things that really help, I mean, that really hard, it's really hard for us to overcome in dealing with depression, anxiety, and those different things. And then the thing that makes it even harder is the outlets that were there. The outlets excuse me, that we had, excuse me, the outlets that we had in order to deal with those things, they're gone. So now it's like, okay, we have, uh, I have to deal with the anxiety, the depression. So now what do you do? You know, what do you do at this point? You know, normally, you know, I would go shopping or go um, to the gym, you know, some gyms are still open, but you know, that freedom that you had before, you don't have it anymore. So, but you know, Like I'm telling you, it's just lean on God. I mean, that's really it. Those scriptures that are hidden in you, hidden in your heart, those things that make you stronger, those things that develop you, even if you haven't done it in years. If, God know, if you know that God has called you to be a prayer warrior, but you haven't done it in years or if God has, you know, anointed you to, uh, you know, to reach out to do outreach to people. Tell y'all, it's not too late. I don't care what you've done. I'm telling you that fulfillment and that peace comes from where you are with him. And I know that that does that does it for me. Whenever I'm in a bad place, when I think about... um where my happy place is, it's always with him. It's always with him. It's always when I'm in a place of like, you know, before him. It doesn't mean, even mean that everything's lining up. Because things don't be lining up. But it's just that peace of just being surrounded with who he is and surrounded with his presence and those different things. I'm just, it's just nothing like it. Nothing like it. So if you haven't um, been in that place in a while, I encourage you guys to do it. Just, just do it, y'all. It, 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 I'm just telling you. Uh, but I really appreciate going through this journey with y'all. Everything's not always perfect. But we can make it through anything together. And sometimes I feel that we are feel burdened a little bit. We don't want to bother nobody. You know, whatever it is. I'm saying, you know, you go through stuff by yourself. But y'all, we're not supposed to go through anything by ourselves, you know. We have each other at the end of the day. <laughs> um, but man. Man. This stuff is good, y'all. I actually got the pinwheel from Publix. I got that from Publix. And so I, I got these two. But pretty good. But man, 
the this is off the subject, y'all. Very off the subject. Very, very much off the subject. But y'all, please don't let this situation put you in a place where <laughs> you make crazy decisions. Because there was this now this is off the subject, way off the subject, like I said before. There was this lady. She was about in her 20s. She needed money or wanted money. I don't I don't know. But somehow she, you know, she she went and filed all these insurance claims that equals about 102 1.2 million dollars. So she not filed, but she arranged them. Okay. So she did that. But this is the thing. Now this is what you call desperation. Desperation can cause you to make bad decisions. So, what she did was she had her boyfriend cut her hand off. Then when he cut her hand off, he rushed her to the hospital. And then they left the hand back at the house because they didn't want it to be, fit, be saved. Because, you know, like if you lose a limb like a, a finger or a hand or something like that. You're supposed to keep it because somehow they're able to put it all together. But they didn't want that. So they they went and they took her to the hospital. Now, what the problem is, the timeline that she did the insurance. The timeline of the insurance was too close to the incident. And I think they even Googled how do you know where to find um, like the false hands? They did that like right before it happened too. So that, that looked pretty bad. But what the, she did was she, she lost her hand and she had no intent on having her hand back. So she was trying to find a way not to have her hand after her boyfriend did it. So of course they did an investigation. Boyfriend started singing about <laughs> how she pretty much coerced him into chopping her hand off. And supposedly the story was that she chopped it while cutting down a tree or something like that. But that's not what happened. But that being said, <laughs> the point of what I'm saying is this, y'all. Is that desperate times come to desperate measure. But look, you are not in a point of like when we are connected to God, we're not really in a desperate. You know, you might feel desperate, but you really don't have to make a desperate move because, you know, he'll make a way and he'll. Make sure we're okay. So y'all, like I said, just trust in who he is. But y'all, I am getting full. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> okay, but like I said, you know, I, I thank you guys for stopping by with me and allowing me to uh, communicate with you a little bit. So, if you are new again... Make sure you subscribe, like, share, and comment, and click on that post notification bell so that you'll be notified every single time we post a new video. Team Jackson, peace and love. I'm starting to really believe that communication is the key. I think communication is the key. We need to start communicating.